Howdy. Hello, everybody. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Oh, what a gorgeous day it was outdoors today, huh? Beautiful day. We're just waiting for some of our friends to get on. I know when the weather gets nicer, you definitely want to stay outside longer. I see some friends have arrived. I'm trying to see who they are from their pictures. There's Sister Jackie <laughs> and Latia. I seen the little face peeking out over. Hey, Laura Parker, how are you tonight? You and your daughter made it on together. You're having a visit. <laughs> Welcome. Welcome to the visit. Hallelujah. Oh, I got to turn my phone down because the prayer meeting is going to happen tonight. However, that's not what you're hearing right now. Uh, Reverend Kalinsky, he's outside and he is doing yard work before his friends come for a prayer meeting. So that's what you were hearing everywhere. Sister Irma, you're our friend again. Yay! We thought we lost you forever to your other new friends, but you didn't forget us. Welcome. Hey, Tracy. I was talking to Stephanie about you today, and here you are on tonight, hoping that you're doing good. Hallelujah. God is really, really faithful, isn't he? Yes, he is. Good evening, Carol. Okay, we have lots of folks that are on tonight. However, oh good, we could never forget you either. But you're not coming on to say hi, so come on and say hi, okay? Shelly Peck is with us. Yes, she is. It looks like Jackie Ross was the first one to make it on tonight. She's our winner for sure. I see Sister Cynthia, uh, she was just on. Yes, I'm glad that you are blessed. Here's Wendy with us. Hallelujah. Hey, Sister Faye. Hello, hello to you, my dear friend. Hello, hello. Well, tonight before the broadcast, or before book reading, I should say, um, we had dinner and I cleaned everything up and I was taking a bag out to the garbage and there was a bag of cashews with some, just a few chocolate covered almonds in that bag. Hey, sweet penny. How you doing? Maya and Sarah. Welcome everybody. Hey, Lauren, you joined us tonight. Wow. I am like so honored, beyond honored. Too bad I didn't have a story tonight that had something about music or singing in it. But tonight we don't. But I do have a story, Lauren, that is really, really good because I know that you do something really, really good. So... Um, you will like this story if you're able to stay on with us. Hello, Alex. Nice to have you. Oh, it's good to see you also. Cynthia and Robin's Arthur's with us. I always call you Robin Arthur. Sorry. And I bet Mama Harris is somewhere in the distance. My mama keeps saying to me, Ellie, doesn't Sister Harris look beautiful? And she's she does. She looks absolutely gorgeous. Yep. Hello, Danica. How you doing? How's my little girl? I bet she's good. Hi, Marianne. Nice to have you with us tonight. So anyway, back to my story about the nuts that were on the table. Cashews, which is one of my top favorite nuts. And I do like almonds, but I especially especially like almonds when they are covered with dark chocolate. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm, is that good? 
And then my second favorite nut is a macadamia nut. And every once in a while, I can find two of my favorite nuts in the same can. Cashews and macadamia nuts. And I am just in my glory. So as I was finishing them up before the broadcast tonight, I begin to wonder, I wonder what the favorite nuts are that you guys like. So maybe you could just tell us what your favorite nut might be. And it has to be from the nut family, like that you chew, not your nutty family. Oh, Wendy's up there with me. Yes. So we have we have a macadamia on the table. That's one. Let's see how many's going to win. Oh, Sister Marianne, yeah. I do like pecans on a lot of things. Carol is a cashew. All right. So we got one for cashew. We got two for cashews, and we have a pecan, and we have a macadamia. Now, I might not be able to see all of your responses because sometimes that's what happens. Oh, and walnuts. Now, pecans and walnuts, don't you think that they go really, really good in salads? Because I think they do. We had another cashew cashew, uh, chocolate covered almonds and cashews, <laughs> right up there with you, Tracy. Yes, sir. So we have to do that as, um, let me go back here. Um, and cashews, um, cashews, but they don't agree with my stomach. That does not man matter. Jackie we will be praying for your stomach, but it just means cashews gets an award. Okay, Shelly Peck says, Wellesley Farms makes a mix with macadamia, nuts, cashews, almonds, and dark chocolate pieces. My favorite, I don't like the peanuts though. Me either. Me either, Sister Shelly. I just wish they would leave them out. And don't you find that when they put... um the um what do you call it the peanuts in it don't you find that there's more peanuts than there is anything else like that's not fair at all i bought this mixture and i was so excited about it i got you alex i got you laura parker what's your favorite nut um and don't tell me one of your daughters <laughs> <laughs> we can't, we can't, we can't discuss any people nuts. We just have to discuss nuts that we chew. Okay. <laughs> um, and so it said that there was macadamias and cashews and they were like the signature of the bag. And it also said that there were peanuts in it. Oh yes. Pistachios. Don't you love pistachio cake and pistachio ice cream? You can tell that I like nuts, can't you? Because all of them are really nice, but I'm just asking for the favorites. Okay, Laura's is a walnut. All right. Uh, Unsalted Deluxe Mix. It has a green cap, one of my faves. Yeah, but you can't do that because it's got um, a mix. So you have to tell us what your one favorite nut is, Nicole. You can't just do it all. I know peanuts are the cheapest. That's why they put so many in the mixes. But if it's a signature, don't you think that that should be the most prevalent? Okay, Arthur said cashews and Cynthia likes pistachios. So when I got the bag, I'm like searching through all of these peanuts. I mean, thousands of peanuts trying to find a cashew or a macadamia nut. And I was so discouraged, so discouraged. 
Oh, okay. So this means three. Three for the Taylor family because there's Jordan, Chance, and Kim. And they all like cashews. So Carol is saying, yes, I agree. Yeah, I know peanuts are cheaper, but um, I don't know. Now, if I'm if I go to um they don't do it anymore, but um roadkill, oh it's not roadkill, Texas Roadhouse. Um, we lots of times get roadkill at Texas Roadhouse. They used to put peanuts on your table and you could like crack them. Oh, okay. N Nicole, I can't put down cashews or almonds. I have to choose one. So because cashews is first, is that your absolute favorite or is almonds your absolute favorite? You can't get two votes tonight. You're really trying to cheat on us tonight and get more in. That's because you want to win. I know it. Jackie says, for those of you who like cashews, they're cheaper at Aldi's. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> you like that, huh, Nikki? I don't know. Um, cashews. Yes. I. Good job, Nikki. You picked the right one. Yes, you did. Um, I'm not. I don't know how much they are at Aldi's, but I get mine at Trader Joe's. And I also buy mine at the Christmas tree shop. That's where I can find my can of cashews and macadamia nuts picked. And that is like an even Steven. That's perfect. So check it out. Check it out. I have some sea salt and turbinado sugar, dark chocolate almonds. So we have to say that Wendy likes almonds. I have no idea what turbinado sugar is, but we're going to put you down for almonds. Okay, time is on. Okay, Gabe says cashews, Owen, and Michelle pistachios. Okay, um, Gabe is cashews. Owen and Michelle are pistachios. So that's two points, guys, for pistachios. Okay, we're missing one. We're missing a family member. Where is he? What's his favorite? Come on, we need to know. Um, oh, okay, so that kind of sugar is like a sugar-free type that is good for you. Well, that's good. I never, I don't know, I never heard of Torbonado sugar. I'll have to, I'll have to check it out. Jerry bought me some sugar-free dark chocolate bark with cashews chopped up in it. Oh my, was that good. So it's a raw sugar, an awesome natural. All right, I'll have to look it up. Can you cook with the same amounts like a swerve? Or do you have to make adjustments if you use torbinous sugar for cooking? Torbinado. Now, Nicole, you're messing me up. I thought turbines but aren't turbines things that you wear on your head <laughs> Wendy have you been eating turbines sugar <laughs> oh thanks for the laugh tonight too much too much fun Wendy says stop and shop nature's promise sounds good I'll have to try it I'll just have to give that a try have you tried um, the chocolate-covered almonds, um, Nikki, that she's talking about with the chocolate on it? Um, yes, you can. You can totally swap it out. Perfect. I'm going to have to try it. Going to have to try it. Okay, so let's figure up the totals, okay? I can tell just by looking at my paper who won. So we have one macadamia, we have one pecan. Now again, um, you might have seen more, but I can only go by what 
Levi, it's about time you almost didn't make it in. One, two, three, four. All right, you brought pistachios. Oh, Papa Mike buys them for him every week and has a handful before bed. Yes, nuts are very, very good to eat before you go to bed. I love, love. Pistachios is something that I've been eating a lot, so... <laughs> Sister Irvin says she likes chocolate nuts of any kind. That's because, like me, you really like the taste of the chocolate. Yeah. Okay, so pecans and macadamia nuts, they came in at one a piece, okay? Almonds and walnuts came in at two a piece. Um, <laughs> someone just came on from the church and said, I love cashews. I have tried those chocolate almonds. Uh, I have tried those chocolate almonds. I'll check those out. Um, so maybe you're going to say I haven't. Okay. So pistachios came in at five. It's Lauren. Lauren, you're trying to get all these points for the cashews by saying the whole entire full gospel interdenominational church loves cashews. I, I think that falls under cheating. That's what I think. And I think I wrote you down, Lauren, for cashews. Maybe I didn't. All right. So cashews are the winners tonight. And we have 50 Dean Cashew Lovers. Wow. Anyway, good job. Good job, everybody. Yes, yes, you got to try those chocolate almonds, Nikki. <laughs> Aaron says Lauren rigged it. <laughs> hey, Aaron, nice to have you with us tonight. All right, so the cashews are the winners tonight. All right. Well, tonight, um, as we were talking about our favorite nuts and the nuts that we like to eat, um, our book is about something that ends up being a favorite. So that's pretty neat, isn't it? Yeah. So tonight, our story is a Berenstein Bears story. And it's called The Berenstain Bears and the Sitter. Yes, you heard me right. Um, yes, coffee beans. You know what? Um, you know what's really funny? I shouldn't have read your, your note, Aaron, because now you sent me on another tangent. I don't like coffee. Um, if you go to my church, most of you are aware of that. Some of you, I think, forget because... Reverend Kalinsky is such a lover of coffee, and I am just the opposite. I don't like the aftertaste. I do like the smell, but not the aftertaste. So isn't it funny, Aaron, that I absolutely love chocolate covered espresso beans? Like, whoa! Like I know enough about coffee to know that espresso coffee is like espresso, like it's off the charts. And I, I tried one one day and I love chocolate covered espresso beans. Actually, I think it was when we went to Costa Rica for our 20th wedding anniversary. We went to a coffee, um, it's not called an orchard, but, you know, where they grow coffee and they make it and everything. And so I tried one and I fell in love with them. I love chocolate covered espresso beans, but I literally hate coffee. Hey, Ohio's in the house. Welcome, Tracy O'Neill. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hallelujah. It's nice to have you with us tonight. So here is the first picture of our story for tonight. If you see that little note at the top, I mark that because next week I have a special story that I want to read you. 
Now this little note says, Mom and Dad are going out. Gramps and Gran are too. Who will stay home with the cubs? Just anyone won't do. Yes, you've got to love those bears. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited I get to come to church real soon. All right, Tracy. That must mean you're going to come for a visit. It'll be nice to have you. Okay, here we go. You ready to start our story? All right. Hmm. What's this? said Papa Bear as he took the day's mail from the Bear family's mailbox. It was a notice telling about an important meeting that night at the Bear Country Town Hall. All right, good morning. Good evening, Alan. Nice to have you with us. So here are the kids. Look at, they're on the stairs. They're playing. And here is Papa. He's reading his letter. Ooh. It's about a town meeting. It's an important town meeting. Mama Bear called up Grizzly Gran. Brother and Sister Bear sometimes stayed with Gramps and Gran when Mama and Papa Bear had to be away. But Gramps and Gran got the same thing in their mailbox and they were planning to go to this important town meeting. So brother and sister couldn't stay with them that night. Here's mama, she's making the call. She's talking to Gran. And there they are and she's finding out. She can't watch. Brother and sister. Or with Aunt Maud, they would stay. Or Cousin Wilbur, they were going to be at the meeting too. Everybody was going to the meeting tonight. Why can't, why can't we go with you? Asked sister, beginning to get a little upset. Yeah, added Brother Bear, Be because said Papa, this, this meeting is for grown-ups. And, and besides, it won't be over until late, way, way past your bedtime. Well, well, where are we, where are we going to stay? The cubs wanted to know. Look at everybody she's calling is going to this important meeting at the Bear Clubhouse. Oh my goodness. Look at brother and sister bear. They, they look worried, don't they? Oh my goodness, they look worried. I know when I was little, I wanted to know who was going to be babysitting me. How about you? You're going to stay right here, said Mama, as she put down the phone. Um, um, uh, alone, said sister. Of course not said Mama. I've arranged for a sitter. A, a, a sitter? said Brother. Who, who is it going to be? asked Sister. Mrs. Grizzle, who lives in the hollow stump at the end of the road, said Mama, feeling much better about the whole thing and leaving the kids at home. Uh-oh. Mrs. Grizzle? Not Mrs. Grizzle. They weren't feeling better about this situation at all. No, please not her. Here's Mama telling them the story. And look at their faces when they find out. No, 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 not Mrs. Grizzle, please. Why, why do you think that that's such a problem? Once when sister was playing with her friends, 
Their ball went into Mrs. Grizzle's flower garden. Mrs. Grizzle wasn't too happy about that at all. Look at. Uh-oh. Look at their remembering. Look at look at her face. Look at look at how upset she looks. And another time when brother was flying his kite, it swooped down from the air and bumped Mrs. Grizzle on the hat. <laughs> she wasn't too tickled about that either. Look at her. She's not very happy looking, is she? Look at even the bird and the frog are scared of what is going to happen. <laughs> Do you ever like think someone is not going to be nice because of a first impression? Sometimes that happens, doesn't it? And a first impression, if you're watching us and you're really little, that means the very first thing you think about someone. Like you would see me for the very first time and hopefully you would say, oh, she looks nice. Or you might say, she looks mean. <laughs> okay, I hope it's you think I look nice. Later that evening, after the supper things had been cleaned up, Mama and Papa got ready to go to the town meeting. But, but, but who's going to scrub our backs, R read us a story, and, and tuck us in? asked Sister, still a little nervous about the idea of a sitter, and especially Mrs. Grizzle. I understand that Mrs. Grizzle has raised seven cubs of her own, said Mama, putting on her hat. And I'm sure she's perfectly good, a perfectly, perfectly good back scrubber, story reader, and tucker inner. <laughs> a tucker inner. Say that three times fast. Tucker inner, tucker inner, tucker inner, tucker inner. Oh, hey, you can say it pretty good, can't you? I'm surprised. Brother Bear said under his breath, She's not going to scrub my back. No way am I going to let her scrub my back. Oh, they, they're not really, really that happy. Ooh, look at, look at Mama Bear's hat. And Papa's got his on, too. And there's old brother over there talking under his breath. She ain't scrubbing my back. No way, no way. <laughs> oh no, Nikki. We've got to help you tonight with a happy ending. Oh my goodness, Nikki. She did have a mean babysitter and she had a thick wooden paddle. Whoa! But Nikki, we know that you are such a good little girl that there's no way you ever got that paddle used on you. We just know it for sure. Mrs. Grizzle came walking up the path to the bear's treehouse right on time. She was not a minute too early. She wasn't a minute too late. She was right on time. There was no question about it. It was the same Mrs. Grizzle who got bopped with the kite and didn't like cubs trumping her flowers. She was very large, almost as big as Papa, and she carried a drawstring bag. She was a grizzly bear, and grizzly bears are big, aren't they? Yes, they are. There's the kids looking at her. See them? And look at... Oh! She... She's scary looking, isn't she? Oh, 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 oh. oh, 
Nikki, you're going to have to go over to Grandma Judy's house with Penny because she gives her baths. <laughs> She's a nice babysitter. Nikki, you got the wrong babysitter. <laughs> oh, Nikki, you spoiled it. Nikki did get that paddle. She does look mean, Sister Irma. She's like, <laughs> I don't know. I think I would have been scared too. Although when you think about it, if you got bopped on the head by a kite and you looked out and you had kids running in your flower garden, don't you think that you would be a little upset? No, I don't see a smile on that babysitter's face at all. In fact, she looks like she's not going to be nice. I think she's going to send them right to bed with no snack, no ice cream, no nothing. That's what her face looks like to me. She got into the house and... Whoa! said Mrs. Grizzle as she sat down in Papa's big chair. It sure is good to get a load off your feet. She took off her hat and looked into her drawstring bag. There's something about somebody looking into a bag that makes cubs very, very, very curious. Um, Mim... Miss, Mrs. Grizzle, said Sister, being so brave. Yes, little one? Um, well, what's in the bag? Oh, nothing much. Just some things I take along when I go a-sitting. A piece of string, a pack of cards. But look at. Ah, she's happy. <laughs> she don't she don't look as mean in this picture, does she? No, she she doesn't look very mean at all. Ah. And look at her over here. She's pulling out all of these things in her bag. And she doesn't quite look as mean anymore, huh? Meanwhile, over at the town hall, the bears were getting ready for all of their important meeting. There they are. They're all going into the town hall. There's Mama and Papa heading in. See her in her teal dress with the polka dots, and Dad's got a red hat. See him? They were getting ready for speeches and voting and arguments about some new laws. Oh, but Mama's mind was not on the meeting at all. And neither was Papa's. Mama and Papa Bear were thinking about what was going on back home. Hmm. Sister sure looked a little worried when we left, fretted Mama. So did Brother, agreed Papa. So they decided to call home and see how things were going. So here's everybody at the meeting. They're all coming in. They're talking. They're finding seats. And there's Mama and Papa all worried at the telephone. Yep. That's a telephone, guys. Do you know that when I was a little girl, I actually talked on telephones that looked like that? I did. I used to talk to my grandma on a phone that was just like that. <laughs> That's a telephone. It's not like your cell phone, guys. I almost picked my cell phone up that I'm using to record tonight to show you what it looked like. <laughs> that would have been funny, huh? Things are going just fine, said Mrs. Grizzle when she answered the phone. Brother and sister can't come to the phone right now because they're busy playing Cat's Cradle. Ah, 
That's why she had the string for Cat's Cradle. Yes, that's that game. If you don't know about it, you put string on your fingers and you go in and you go out and it makes a cradle by you putting all the string together. Now, you can't tell what to do by what I'm doing, but I know what it means. So have your family check it out if you don't know about it. Have a good meeting, shouted the cubs. But but they say to have a good meeting. After Cat's Cradle, they played Go Fish. I love Go Fish. With the cards that came out of Mrs. Grizzle's drawstring bag. Then they played Tiddly Winks with a special set of winks that Mrs. Grizzle had made out of a polished stones and a snail shell cup. Now that's a hard word to say, snail shell. So let's try that one three times. Snail shell, snail shell, snail shell. Oh. <laughs> we can't get that one, can we? So here they are. Mrs. Grizzle's on the phone and look at the kids. Oh, they're not worried. They're not upset. They're not scared. They look really happy now, don't they? Ooh, look at There they are. There they are playing Go Fish. And there's the Tillywings. Look at that. Wow, that is wild. Look at, look at little brother's tongue sticking out of his mouth. Do you ever play games and you get so into it that you're like... <laughs> I've done that before. Yes, I have. Oh, I'm so happy that they are having a good time. I'm glad they didn't get Nikki's babysitter. How about you? Sister Irma says she knows about cats in the cradle. Yes, you do. I know you do. And it's Wendy's favorite game, Go Fish. Penny loves playing games. All right. Wendy likes pick up sticks. I bet. I bet you, Wendy, Mrs. Grizzle had pickup sticks in that bag, too. All of a sudden, oh, oh, after a while, the cubs got the yawns. Oh, did I make you yawn? Isn't it funny how when you watch somebody yawn, you start to yawn? <laughs> I gotcha. And Mrs. Grizzle began getting them all ready for bed. Oh, look it. Oh, and doesn't she look sweet? Oh, I gotta, I just gotta go back here for a minute because we had her all wrong, didn't we? Look at, look at this picture of when she first came. Look at. Oh, and we thought, ooh, she looks mean. But look at her now. Look at her. Oh, I don't think she was mean at all. I think she was just serious about getting to the house on time. And she knew she had to do a good job taking care of these kids. That's what I think happened. And we just took it for her being mean. Oh, we have to be so careful that we don't misjudge people, huh? Yes, she did, Donna. Hey, Donna, welcome. She did look really mad, but she wasn't. Sometimes when we're really serious or we're thinking about something special, sometimes our face might look like we're mean, but we're not mean at all. After a while, the cubs got the yawn, so Mrs. Grizzle, she said, it's time to get my little babies to bed. Look at her. Look, look how kind she is. She's giving them piggy, no, she's giving them grizzly bareback rides. <laughs> and look, look through the rail and you can still see how happy she is. And she, she never told them, you bought me on the head with my kite. You ruined my flowers in my flower bed. No, 
She turned out to be a great, great lady, didn't she? And she did indeed turn out to be a very good scrubber. Brother changed his mind about not having her his back scrapped, scrubbed by Mrs. Grizzle. Remember? She's not going to scrub my back. No way. Oh, but he changed his mind. Oh, look at how good that back scrub looks. Wow. Look at his face. Look at, look at, he's got his eyes closed. He is so happy. Penelope, does Grandma Judy, does she scrub your back? Oh, there's nothing nicer than when somebody scratches your back, huh? Did you ever, ever, ever get an itch and someone came along and scratched your back? Oh, it's the best. And to have a back scrub, you know, I'm a grandma that scrubs that back. And my grandbabies are all, do it again. They love getting back scrubs. That's the best ever. Just the best. I agree, Arthur. When I seen her carrying those two cubs, and I know how old she is because she already raised her cubs, I'm like, wow, that is a heavy load. She is a grizzly bear for sure, huh? Well, not only was she a back scrubber, but she was a fine story reader too. And a really, really, really super tucker inner. <laughs> Let's say that word fast three times. Tucker inner, tucker inner, tucker inner. <laughs> Did you notice my eye? Does your eye do that when you say tucker inner, tucker inner, tucker inner, tucker inner? <laughs> One eye stays straight and the other one is like blinking away. <laughs> there she is. Oh, she's reading them the best story ever. Look at, oh, they're just loving it. And she is so happy. Oh, and look at her tucking them in. Oh, she is just wonderful. As she went to walk out the door, she heard the cubs talking. I hope Mama and Papa had a good meeting, said Sister with a yawn. <sighs> because we had a very, very good sit tonight. The cubs had a number of different sitters from time to time. But Mrs. Grizzle was their absolute favorite. And they were always, always so glad when she came to the door and she was going to be their sitter. <laughs> Isn't that great? There she goes. She's leaving their room and she's just so happy. She did such a great job. And there they are getting ready to go to sleep. All tucked in as snug as a bug in a rug. Okay, look at Sister's Bear she's holding. Sister's Bear has its eyes closed. And Brother's Bear... It's laying there with its eyes wide open, huh? Isn't that funny? How cute is that? I bet some of you have stuffed animals that you sleep with. I just think that you might. But those are cute, aren't they? So we have to be careful to make sure that we don't think we know what people are like until we actually get to meet those people. So think about it. Um, they always thought Mrs. Grizzly was mean and nasty. And she wasn't. She just didn't like what they were doing because she took a lot of time to plant those flowers. 
So it wasn't right that sister was walking in her flower bed and making the flowers die, right? And she didn't like getting bopped on her hat with a kite flying down through the air. That probably hurt, huh? So Penny, she has lots of animals in her bed. I bet you have so many animals in your bed, Penny, that your mom and dad have to search to find you because all those bears and animals of all kinds just hide you away. Yeah. And you are like the cutest, cutest little bear cub ever. So you just blend right in there and they have to find where is my penny? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, what a great story, huh? Oh, I just love that. Um, I have to think about my babysitters and I had some babysitters. Oh, I, I just loved them so much. They were so, so kind. And then I had some babysitters that was not mean to me, but me and my siblings was mean to them. And we used to think that it was funny to play tricks on them and hide on them. And that was, that was not a good thing at all to do. And when I got to be bigger, I had to go and apologize to them because sometimes we were so mean to our babysitters that wanted to do fun things with us and all these things that we would actually make her cry. That, that wasn't nice, was it? So sometimes we can have mean babysitters, but if we're not careful, sometimes we can be mean to our babysitter. So if you are a babysitter and you babysit kids, be nice to them. Don't bring no wooden paddles. <laughs> and if you're being babysat by a babysitter, be extra, extra, extra kind to them, okay? Yes, Sister Donna Hayes has it. Yep, that little puppy is being so kind um, to his babysitter, huh? Yeah, so that's really, really, really important. Matt made Marie cry when she babysat him. Yes, did you know that Matt Wesson used to be babysat? by the woman he married. <laughs> Isn't that something? Yes. She used to babysit him. And then he grew up and he got really, really handsome. And Marie got older and he didn't need a babysitter no more. And they ended up falling in love and became a wonderful couple. And now they are the best mummy and daddies in the world. Yes. <laughs> That's quite a story to tell, isn't it? Yeah. Yep. So who would ever dream that Matt would marry his babysitter? So I have to say that Matt has to be younger than Marie. And that's okay. Sometimes we think the man always has to be older. But it's all right if the lady's a little older than us. Yeah. So he must have, he must have did a really good job. Marie must have did a really good job because Matt decided he was going to marry his babysitter and live with her forever. And he has been babysat by Marie for years now. <laughs> for years, Marie has been babysitting Matt. <laughs> <laughs> Love you, Matt and Marie. <laughs> oh, the stories that we can tell, huh? How funny is that? Just really funny. So anyway, it's nice. It's nice to have people watch us and it's really nice to be kind to them. So if you have a babysitter and you could, because this is a week that you guys are all off of school, um, why don't you draw them a picture? 
why don't you do something really special? If they look like they're thirsty, how about getting them a nice glass of water with some ice in it? Or making sure that they sit down or you help them walk downstairs or just, just be so kind to them, okay? Yeah. Like yesterday, um, my husband had his sisters over and I was working from home. Um, and hey, Alicia, happy to hear you guys are doing better. Please, please give my love to your daddy and tell him we are praying and it is going to be well. So happy that you're on and I felt bad. I missed you and your husband at Easter, but I was so happy that you were able to get to church on Easter morning. And I looked for you this past Sunday, but I understand um, with everything going on um, what happened. So just so happy. Take good care of that mama of yours. Take very good care. So Aaron says, not a babysitter, but my third grade teacher looked grumpy like her. And he dumped my entire desk out on the ground when I didn't have a pencil. And then I was afraid of adults traumatized. Oh, Aaron, that would be scary, wouldn't it? So what should we tell Aaron that he should do or anyone else? who has a teacher that would dump their desk over and yell at them because they didn't have a pencil. Okay, we're going to think for a minute. Da, 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 I know, Aaron, I believe it is a true story. However, Aaron, you make sure that you go home and you tell your mummy and your daddy, okay? And if you happen to see your principal in the hallway or near, you go and tell your principal what happened too, okay? Because no one should have done that to Aaron and no one should do that for you. And yes, Aaron, we need to pray for them. See, I had a mean teacher too. And she was really mean and she didn't like me and I knew it. And it was hard to go to every day to school because of that. But I did and I did a lot of praying for her and I told my mama and my mama had some conversations with her and those did help. So make sure that you go for help. And Aaron, we're glad that you're okay today. We're really glad. Oh, Alicia, you were watching Sunday. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I just, I love that I got my voice back. I'm just, I'm just so happy. And I've been singing every morning. Yeah. I even got to a place where I didn't even want to listen to music in my car. I would listen to music when I was cooking, but that kind of like motivated me or I have like some kind of little faster type songs. So I put that on if I wanted to clean really fast, like it energized me. But I got to a place where I didn't even want to listen to songs and I had to go into Hartford and I um, asked um, my phone to find me, um, cover me. And so almost halfway to Hartford, I just kept singing that song with Mark Condon, cover me when I'm hurting, cover me when I'm not strong, cover me when I'm going through the storm. And then another song came on and from my house to Hartford and parking, there were only two songs that came on. That's how long they were, but it just kind of like rejuvenated my life and begin to make me really think about some things. And so Sunday morning was just my coming out day. So thank you. Thank you. It was, it was a joy to sing to God and hopefully, um, I blessed a lot of people. So, um, that's good. No, Jackie, he was not sitting on it. Um, he was being a good person. He just couldn't find his pen. So,
Aaron said he will, he will. So that's good. You go see the principal. Now, Aaron works at a school and he is the maintenance man. And so many of you kids want to be a maintenance person at a school. And when I went to school at Nathan Hale, I was best friends with the maintenance man. Oh, I loved the maintenance man. And if Aaron would have been my maintenance man when I was in fifth grade, I know that Aaron and I would have been as good of friends as the maintenance man that I had. And I just loved to be around him. And he was so kind to all of us kids. So Aaron is a maintenance man at a school for children that have special needs because of disabilities. And I know he is the best. And I know any child that's having a bad day there, when they get to see Aaron, the maintenance man, he changes their whole day because he's not mean. He's not Mr. Grizzly Man, but he is a friend. So that's important, isn't it? It really is. So Wendy says she had a third grade teacher, Meanie, too. We were bad, though we called her Mrs. Putt-Putt. <laughs> yeah, well, unfortunately, Wendy, um, I think all of us were bad at some time or another because we all, there were teachers we didn't like and we were not always kind to them. No, we weren't. I had one teacher. I had her actually two years in a row um, for second and third grade. Oh, I loved this teacher. And when I got her for third grade, we had a whole entire quarter, three months. We got to take and build forts over our desks and we had to leave the front of the fort out so that we could see the teacher. And every day we got to like add new things to our fort and it was like this tent. Oh, it was awesome. I loved it and I loved her and I did so good in her grade. I loved that teacher. And I was hoping that I would get her for fourth grade. And I did. And I got this teacher named Mrs. Pila. Oh, she was just so mean. But it wasn't just to me. She, she had three favorites in the class. And she always, always did everything for them. And everybody else in the class, she didn't. But you know what she taught me? She taught me that I should be fair and that I shouldn't have favorites. I just knew I shouldn't. So anyway, oh, perfect. God's peace is wonderful. And Matthew says that they're going to sing that song, Cover Me Tonight Before They Go to Bed. Nice. Hey, Arthur. Yes. Oh, and Aaron said, and that's what happens when we're kind to people. Aaron said, and on my bad days, they warm my heart. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yes, The Chosen is on tonight. It's a new episode. I can't wait. And so nine o'clock is coming. It's a little like two minutes more than one hour away. I hope if you haven't watched The Chosen, you guys get a hold of it. It's just beautiful. Oh, Alicia, how nice. That's very nice. I'm glad. I'm glad I was a blessing to you. I uh, pray for you so, so much. And um, just for God to like be there with you because you've had, had some great losses. Yes. Yep. So please tell daddy we're praying for him love him very much. So it's great. So yes, good, good life lessons. It's wonderful to be kind to others. 
It can soften that person, their heart, and make you feel good inside. That's so true, Maria. So true. Make sure that you get onto FGIC uh, site if you haven't, because Maria Lashley left her testimony on there. Yes. Okay. Owen said he read a story in school about a mean teacher named Viola Swamp. I read that book, Owen. She is mean. She is mean. But you don't deserve a mean teacher because you are a good kid, Owen. So thank God you do not have Viola Swamp. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes. Yep. Um, Jackie had a house mother like that. But if we learn our lessons, um, we're going to be okay. So anyway, thank you, Sister Laura. For your kindness. Um, Owen said he read a story. Okay, we read that one. That's a thread now. And so um, I know, isn't that awful, Wendy? Yeah, even her name, Viola Swamp. <laughs> yes. Um, there's no, there's no way uh, that you couldn't tear up. Yeah, beautiful. So get on and listen to that, okay? Um, oops, I flipped it again, guys. Sorry. <laughs> did you did you like my face cloth? <laughs> That's what's behind my phone. <laughs> Benny has a girl named Viola in her class, and this Viola is nice, Owen. So not every Viola is mean. So Penny, you be nice to this Viola. Yes. Yep. So. Oh, Aaron, I have no idea why you threw that name in there, but anyway, so love, love you too. I'm so happy that we had some new friends join us tonight and some folks will be coming on to watch us when they can't talk to us because, um, we won't be live, but, um, anyway, it's nice to have you on tonight. It's nice to have been visiting with you. I always uh, look forward to this, even in my busy schedule. And some nights it's it's rough. Tonight, uh, when I got home, my husband had warmed up some leftovers. We had rice with um, ter sweet teriyaki chicken over top of it. And that was leftovers that I had made from Sunday. And then he went and he got some coleslaw and he got um, three bean salad that I absolutely love. It was the greatest, greatest dinner ever. So it was really, really nice. So that helped me not to be so rushed tonight. So that was very, very kind of him to do. And that's what it is when, you know, you have people that really work together with you. It's important. So Penelope, we're going to get ready to say good night and say our hugs. So are you ready? We we have a long way to go. Our friends from the Philippines and Africa didn't join us tonight, but let's send them hugs anyway. What do you think? Yeah. And we don't know who's going to be watching um, when we go off air. So let's make sure everybody, everybody gets a hug. Make sure Ohio gets a hug because that's where Tracy's from, and she says she's going to come visit us soon. So, and sometimes Tony and Carmen comes on and watches us, and we got to reach them all the way in Florida. So if you have a friend, or you have a grandchild, or a child, um, just send them our link, okay? Share story time with them, and then they can watch it whenever they want. Good night, Owen and Levi. Love you so much. Have a good night's sleep and play and do fun things tomorrow because you don't have school. Yes. So let's get ready. Come on. Get everybody in our hands. Yep. Sister Faye. Oh, yes. I got her. And Donna. You put Donna and Sister Faye in here. Boy, you are... Your hands have got a handful. <laughs> okay, bring them over. Get them, get them, put them all in your heart. 
Get them all in there. Yes. Now hang on to them really tight. Hang on really, really tight. Okay. I'm going to count to three and we are going to give everybody from just down the street to far away the biggest hug in all the world. Maybe you're missing someone. Oh, Penny's hugging the whole town of Manchester. Way to go, Penny. Yes, 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 you're right. You're never too old to listen to a story and to learn lessons. That's true. You're right, Aaron. All right, Aaron. I don't know where you are tonight, but if you're out in your little house in the woods, we're sending you a hug wherever you are. You ready? I'm going to count. When I count to three, we got to hug them and we got to make sure we hug every single person. So make sure you hug them really, really good. One, two, three. Oh, I love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you, love you. Whoa. <laughs> Hugs always, always make me feel so good. Alicia, did you feel our hugs reaching you tonight? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. Yes, Donna says big, big hugs to all. Hugs are so special. Make sure when you go to bed tonight and every night of the week that you give Jesus a hug because he lives right here, right here. Yep. Maria said she could feel the hugs from all of you and the love. Laura, could you feel our hugs? She lives a long ways away. I was waiting for Shelly's response. She always squeezes us so tight. And there it is. There it is. Yep. There it is. So I want you to know I love you <laughs> all the way to the moon. <laughs> circling it and circling it and circling it because I just love you so much. Vroom! And off we go to Jupiter and Mars and Pluto. Woo! Around the sun and whipping around the moon and back to the sun and Venus and boom! Right back into my heart. You are the best. You are so smart. And you are so good. Jesus said that you are beautifully and wonderfully made. He said you can be all things because you're beautifully and wonderfully made. And when God took time to make you, he put the most beautiful substances, talents inside of your life. And so when I see Alex sing, that's a talent he put inside of you, Alex. <laughs> when I see Penelope's little smiling face, oh, that is the talent God gave to her. When, when you do such kind things for me, oh, like Sunday morning going to visit your classrooms and you were there and so happy to see me, oh, you just blessed my heart. So I want you to know that Jesus loves you and I love you. Your mommy and daddy love you. Your grandmas and grandpas love you. Your aunts and uncles. And even though sometimes our brothers and sisters act like they don't really love us, they really, really, really do. Yeah. And Penny loves to sing and she likes to make up songs about Jesus. Me too, Penny. When I was little, I used to make up songs all the time and sing. Don't ever, ever lose your song because all those birds outside, they know a great secret and they make sure they sing every single morning. And you know what? Today we had 
a yellow finch on our bird feeders. Oh, yellow finches are so pretty. And we had robins that are ready to have their babies waddling through our front yard. Oh, it was so beautiful today. All the birds that came to have dinner at our house. It was great. Lanika, she likes to pray. Oh, Lanika, that is beautiful. And prayer just helps people to just love Jesus. Um, Matt is saying that they have bluebirds. Yes, bluebirds are beautiful too, aren't they? Yeah. So I just want you all to Owen said he saw and heard a woodpecker. Yes, and you can tell, huh? They're like... And they wake us up, don't they? Oh, my phone is like going crazy. It didn't like that. Sorry. Sorry, guys. I, I'm like losing you. Now we're back. My phone was like, what in the world is going on? Yes, you can hear woodpeckers. I'm glad you stayed on, Levi and Owen. I thought you were leaving us and you're still with us. So it's great, so great to be with you guys. Thank you for the flowers, Sister Faye. They're beautiful. I hope everybody enjoys the flowers Sister Faye brought for us tonight. So anyway, I'm going to say good night to you. It's 811, my favorite number 11. And it's time for us to say good night. So sing Jesus a song. Have a wonderful night. Sister Donna said she heard a mockingbird, and those are fun to hear, aren't they? So you have a wonderful rest of the week. Tomorrow is hump day, but we're not as excited about this hump day because uh, that's going to speed up our vacation. So we're going to like keep it as slow and as long as we can before we reach Wednesday. And then we're going to hang on to every single second to make Wednesday last a long, long time. Okay. I love you all so much. Thank you for joining me tonight. Good night, Sister Laura Parker. Nice to have you with us. Hopefully before too long, you'll be able to get up and see those daughters of yours and your grandbaby. She's absolutely gorgeous, most beautifully made by God. It's beautiful. Good night, Nikki. I hope we got you straightened out tonight, girl. I certainly hope so. <laughs> and uh, everybody try that new um, chocolate covered almond Wendy and Nikki was talking about. And um, we will we will try it. It's not a turban though, okay? It's turbandine. I believe that's how you said it. So I'm going to look for that. Love you all so much. Thanks for sharing what your favorite nut is. And uh, love, love, love you all so very, very much. God bless you. Have a great rest of the week. And I will see you. Wendy said, Turbin Auto. T-U-R-B-I-N-A-D-O. Turbinado Sugar. And those chocolate covered almonds were covered with turbinado sugar. So we'll try it. Hallelujah. I'm glad, Nikki. I'm, I'm so happy that, that we were able to get you where you needed to be tonight. <laughs> God bless you. Thank you for making me laugh. Thank you for making me happy. My heart is warm, full of joy and love, and it's just happy as it can be. So God bless all of you, and we will see you Next week, same time, but I will also see you on Sunday. Yes, I will. God bless you. Have a great, great week. Bye-bye.